So probably just like me, you would like to have a power efficient but performance notebook, much like Apple's M1 MacBook Air. But the problem is that Microsoft has a performance issue on ARM. So in this video, I'm going to look at whether the newly released Project Volterra is going to solve that problem. So everybody's been admiring what Apple, of course, has been doing with their M1 and M2 chips over the last couple of years, and their devices that people aspire to own. Even me, I'm a Windows person, but you know, I keep thinking, mm, maybe I would actually like one of those Mac M1s. And the future seems to be ARMs, because especially as we go into ever increasing energy costs, people working in different locations more. We want something that's portable and where the battery life is gonna last more than just three or four hours on a notebook that can also do things like video editing, photo editing, and tasks that require a little bit more than just you know type in a Word document or email maybe. But Microsoft has a big problem at the moment. So the biggest problem, of course, that Microsoft has is hardware. And while Microsoft hasn't at this point designed its own ARM chip, although I do believe that's gonna have to happen in the future if it stands any chance of catching up with what Apple is doing right now, there are, of course, ARM devices that run Windows, but the problem with them is that they can't begin to match the performance that Apple is offering with its M1 and M2 chips. And while performance has improved over the last few years, the battery life is still quite poor. So if you buy a Windows on ARM device right now, not only are you compromising on performance compared to Apple's chips and, of course, Intel's x86 platform, but you're also compromising on battery life. So what exactly is Project Volterra? Now this was first announced back at the build in 2022, and it's a small hardware device that's intended for developers so that they can port their applications across to ARM to test the applications and basically give them an easy way to make sure they have a way to test and work with Windows on ARM. Now, when this was announced back at Build, even I, in one of these videos, I think, uh, compared the design of it to a Mac Mini. And just because it looks like a Mac Mini, what you have to really understand about Project Volterra is that it's not designed to compete with the M1 chips or any of the Mac hardware lineup. This is purely a device for developers. Despite the design, despite some of the marketing looks a little bit Apple-esque, if you look at the launch video and things like that, this is not intended to be a competition with the Mac Mini. It's not about that at all. So I was a little bit sad to see when Microsoft released a video yesterday announcing the availability of Project Volterra, people saying how sad it was, what Microsoft is doing, how they can never compete, and that this is, of course, just a sad imitation of a Mac Mini. No, 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 you've got that all wrong. So that's the hardware part of the story. The software part of the story is that since this was first announced, I think it was back in May, something like that, Microsoft has been working on updating its software portfolio to make sure that it runs natively on ARM. Now, a lot of this stuff is still in preview at the moment, but it's designed to go with, of course, this release of this new piece of hardware. So Visual Studio 2022 now has a native ARM version in preview. The .NET Framework version 7 also has a version now that natively runs in ARM in preview, the software development kit for Windows, and a whole load of other software that you might just want to use on an ARM device like Teams, the OneDrive Sync client, the Edge browser, and even Office, there's now an ARM version. And of course, all of that needed to happen, especially with those applications, because if Microsoft isn't willing to port its own software over to ARM, then of course, how can we ever expect developers to follow suit? Now, while that's all fine and dandy, and of course, at this stage, the device is just for developers anyway, it's going to be important going forwards that Microsoft is able to provide a device and software where you can still run, you know, x86 Intel apps. You, know, you think about all those legacy apps that uh, organizations have and things like, I don't know, Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, that don't have native ARM versions for Windows, at least as far as I'm aware, out of the gate, those things are gonna to have to run well on a Windows on ARM device. And that's where the problem lies at the moment. Now there is emulation built into Windows on ARM, so you can run those x86, x64 apps on Windows on ARM. The problem is with the performance of it. 
Now, of course, Apple had their Rosetta, I don't know whether it's emulation or translation, however it works, system working out of the gate for their M1 Max when they were first released, and it worked really well. Of course, the performance can't quite match the native ARM applications, but it came pretty close. Now, I suspect that, you know, Microsoft's emulation system for Windows, probably it's not necessarily about is this software so much worse than Rosetta. I don't know is that the case or not. I don't know if there's been any independent testing into that. But the real problem here, I suspect, is with the hardware. Of course, Rosetta on Mac OS probably works really well just because the hardware is really performant. Unfortunately, Microsoft doesn't have that same luxury with Windows on ARM because the hardware just isn't there. Now, from Microsoft's point of view, a lot of this isn't really a problem, they say. You know, uh, there is a compelling reason to get a Windows and ARM device now. Of course, there isn't really. You better just go with an Intel device at this stage. Rich Turner, who's a principal product manager lead at Microsoft, even came out answering a question by Mary Jo Foley earlier this week, saying that ARM devices can run x86, x64 and ARM applications simultaneously. And currently in-market devices like Lenovo's X135 and the Surface Pro 9 and upcoming devices like Project Volterra are surprisingly quick and will get quicker as more apps are ported. Well, of course, go figure. But surprisingly quick doesn't mean that they can compete with Apple's M1, M2 chips, of course. So it looks like Microsoft cannot solve the hardware problem at least right now. So what are they trying to do instead? They're trying to get developers to port their applications to ARM. And that's what Project Volterra is really about. Now, you need to pay something like five, six hundred dollars for this device. And, you know, Microsoft had a similar situation with Windows Phone back in the day. This didn't really work out for them very well. You know, it was just an unsurmountable problem that basically you're trying to persuade developers to either port or develop applications for a platform that nobody is using. And we have exactly the same situation playing out again here. And I don't think, you know, whatever Microsoft does with Project Volterra, even if they were to give it away for free, that it's necessarily going to solve the problem with native ARM apps on Windows and ARM. So what's the solution here? Well, if it's impossible to solve the hardware issue, and the hardware issue is complex at this point in time, you know, even if Microsoft had their own ARM design, which matched you know, Apple's M1, M2 performance, let's say, there's a question about how you manufacture it. And I'm not really sure about all of the details, but I think Apple have pretty much got the chip manufacturing market sewn up so that they get first preference on producing chips, which basically makes it difficult for other companies to compete. So it might be that it's really a problem for Microsoft to develop anything that can compete and could also be manufactured at the same time. Now, I'm sure that's something that can be solved in the future, of course, but not right at this moment in time. So, you know, is there any other solution? Well, you know, I always think that all of the big software houses could be paid just to port their applications over to Windows on ARM. So obviously, what are the biggest applications on Windows after Office? I don't know, things like all of the Adobe suite of software. I'm sure you can think of a whole load of other things, but probably there's a limited amount of all those really big pieces of software that people actually use every day that would need to be ported across. Now, I don't know whether it's you know financially viable or how much those companies would want to actually port their software over. Of course, it must be a bit frustrating from Microsoft's point of view because, of, of course, if people were using the platform, uh, if people migrated to it en masse, then, of course, the software houses would just follow. But it's probably not going to happen quite like that. So Microsoft either has to wait until they can solve the hardware problem, but I think trying to force all of this to happen now, getting developers to you know, port their software across, uh, is probably just not going to work with Project Volterra. You also have to think about large corporations that have all of their legacy software that's still running, you know, x86. You know, is that software ever going to be ported over? Probably not. So wherever Microsoft goes with Windows and ARM, they need to have devices that can just support that software and have it perform well, just like Apple was able to do with their recent devices.
So let me know what you think about Project Volterra in the comments below, and have you considered moving over to Mac because of the new hardware and the amazing performance and battery life that it offers? But I'm going to leave you today with a video about Project Volterra that gives you a lot more details about the hardware and what it's designed to do, so please check out that. And if you found this video useful, don't forget to give it a like. And I'll see you next time.